fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Ever stop to think how much fun you can have with a blackboard? Why, you can play games on them, draw pictures, leave messages, practice spelling, all sorts of things. But here's the news. There's a blackboard on the back of the special Wheaties blackboard package at your grocer's right now. All you need to use on this blackboard is ordinary chalk, and you can wipe it off with cloth or a regular blackboard eraser and use it again and again. In fact, I think you're going to want several of these Wheaties blackboard packages. You know, so you can let your friends join in with the fun, playing tic-tac-toe or having drawing contests. Or maybe you'll want extra blackboards so you can save your own best drawings. You see, there's no extra charge for the blackboard. Nothing to do, nothing to send in. You just pay the regular Wheaties price. So look for the Wheaties package with the sign on the front that says Blackboard. That means there's one of these wonderful blackboards on the back, ready to use. Be sure to pick up several. They're at your grocer's right now. Ask for the special Wheaties blackboard package. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Are you Silver? Hooray! Carl Lubeck, to all appearances, was a pleasant, inoffensive man whose saddle shop in Rockville did a thriving business. His rather stooped figure, cherubic face, and gold-rimmed spectacles completed the picture of a meek and friendly man, intent upon pleasing his customers and getting along with his fellow townsmen. Ah, good morning, Sheriff. Good morning. Morning, Carl. Came in to get a new stirrup strap. Stirrup strap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have it for you in the chippy. I heard about the stage robbery late yesterday. Did you catch the outlaws? No, must be the same gang that's been operating around here for the last few months. Oh, that's too bad, Sheriff. But you must not be discouraged. We all know you're doing your best. Here, here's your stirrup strap. Thanks, Carl. Uh, charge it. Which other mm-hmm. folks in town felt like you do? But maybe things will change after I get the help I'm expecting. Oh, what help is that? Ever hear of an hombre called the Lone Ranger? Ah, oh, yeah, I've heard of him many times. He's the one who rides the big white stallion and wears a mask. That's right. Well, I requested help from the United States Marshal in Pecos. I just had word that the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend are heading this way. And by thunder, if anyone can find that gang, those hombres are the men to do it. Yeah, they're said to be very clever. Uh-huh. When uh, do you expect them to get here? Uh, late this afternoon. Well, thanks for the stirrup strap. Be seeing you again, Carl. So long. Goodbye, Sheriff. Come in again. A short time after the sheriff left, Carl entered the workroom behind the shop and spoke to a man who was half-heartedly scraping hives. Digger, guide to the hideout. Tell the men to meet here in the workroom at noon. Tell them to cover their tracks well and not to come together. All right, Carl. What's up? You'll find out when I talk to the others. Hurry. It's most important. All right. I'll leave right away. At noon, Digger and five other men stood waiting in the rear workroom. After locking the saddle shop entrance door for the lunch hour, Carl joined them. His appearance had changed radically. There was no longer any evidence of a stoop. The spectacles were removed, and the usually pleasant expression had given way to one of hardness. Carl waved his hand for silence, then spoke. I talked to the sheriff this morning. He's going to have help, special help. Oh, we covered our trail well, Carl. Let him get all the help he wants. Yeah, sure. It's usual, Dicker. You say nothing when you talk. 
You've all heard the Lone Ranger, nicht wahr? Yeah. Now, wait a minute, Carl. Is that the special help the sheriff is getting? Is that masked man coming here to Rockville? Yeah, the sheriff himself told me. Well, what are you going to do, Carl? I decided we must see that the masked man and his friend do not arrive. Why, you mean wait along the trail and ambush him? No, there would be the risk that one or the other would escape such a trap. Remember, they're clever. And what do you plan to do? They are riding from Pecos, and are expected to arrive late this afternoon. The trail follows the slope up to a flat mesa, about a mile long. Yeah, I know the place. It's about three miles from town. Mesa has a gorge to the left where the river runs through. To the right is the sheer cliff. Yeah. Half the gang will wait in hiding near the far end of the mesa. The rest of you men will be at the other end. Well, what will we be doing? Watch for the masked men and Indian. After they reach the mesa, quickly set fire to the dry brush. At the other end of the mesa, we'll watch for the smoke. Then we, too, will start fire. They'll be trapped between the fires. And no one will ever know what happened to them. <laughs> Late that afternoon, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode leisurely along the trail toward Rockville. Near the approach to the mesa, part of the gang waited in hiding behind large boulders, well back from the trail, and watched for the masked man and Indian. Finally, Sam signaled for silence. Quiet, everybody. I hear hoofbeats. Look, there they go. We'll wait a few minutes. Then light the torches and touch them to the brush where we sprinkle the coal oil. Now, let's get ready. All right, Sam. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had ridden about a quarter of a mile when... What's the matter, Silver? Steady, boy. Easy. He must have a... smell smoke. Maybe that's why Silver winning. Oh, oh. Got hope on oh. Yes, I see the smoke behind us, Tonto. And look through trees. We see lots of black smoke rising. We not see fire anywhere when we come up slow. That's strange. The brush and trees up here are thick and dry. It take no time for a small fire to turn to a blazing inferno. Ah. And Kimasabi, look back yonder. Me see flames now. We better get off this mesa. All right, let's go. Come on, Silver. Let's come. Come. The two men had gone only a short distance when they saw thick smoke ahead of them. And a few minutes later, flames were visible. Oh, oh, oh easy. Hello. Brush and trees ahead and behind us are blazing. Easy, fellow, easy. Steady, scout, steady, fellow. We trapped on Major Kimasabi. Flames come from both directions. What we do? We can't go back. It's easy to see. We can't get through ahead. Hello, there's a gorge on the left. The river flows through. It's our only chance. Uh, if big drop down to water, and if river not deep enough... The gorge is narrow, and the water is usually deep there. We'll have to chance it. All right, let's go. One, two, three. Oh. Turning from the trail, the masked man and Indian headed toward the rim of the gorge. By that time, the walls of flame were closing in from either direction, and there was no further time for hesitation. There's the gorge, Tonto. Much too wide for the horse to jump it. We'll have a 50-foot drop into the water. Uh, oh, Silver, hold. Oh. Easy, easy, stuff. Easy, stuff. Easy, stuff. All right, Silver. Jump, fella. Jump, Silver. Jump, out. jump. Come to the top, and they're swimming. Hurry, Tonto. Come on, dive! While the two men and their horses struggled in the rapids down in the gorge, the two walls of fire closed together on the mesa. Later, the outlaws gathered in a canyon on the opposite side of the mesa. The two fires have met up on the mesa. The masked men and Indian are done for. At our end, we waited till we were sure they couldn't turn back. And we waited to make sure they didn't get through to our side. Now we know they're victims of the fire. And we're the only ones who'll ever know what happened to the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend. <laughs> yes, right. Now we go back and continue our operations without interference from that masked man. Let's go. Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Hi. What tastes really good when the weather's hot? I'll tell you what. An ice cream pie made with your favorite ice cream and Betty Crocker white cake mix. It's easy as pie to make. 
All Mom has to do is add water and the whites of two fresh eggs. Then beat and bake. Even if you've never baked a cake before, you'll turn out a high, light white cake the first time. Then, just before serving, spread one layer with your favorite ice cream and cut-in wedges. And remember, the same high-quality ingredients your mom would choose herself are right in the package. Ingredients like famous softest silk flour and pure vegetable shortening. What's more, with all her mixes, Betty Crocker guarantees you a perfect cake every time you bake. Perfect or write General Mills, Minneapolis, for your money back. So, kids... Ask Mother to make a cool, refreshing ice cream pie. It's easy with Betty Crocker White Cake Mix. Now to continue. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto with their horses had fortunately negotiated the 50-foot drop into the water in the gorge without injury. After a struggle against the strong current, the two men managed to reach their horses and direct them through the rapids to a rocky beach just beyond one end of the gorge. Good work, Silver. Good work, boy. Uh, you do plenty good work, Scott. Plenty good. Tonto, as soon as we're arrested, we'll find a place to make camp and get dry. Uh. Me wonder if our priors came as hurry. I'm sure they were purposely set, Toto. Somehow the leader of that gang must have learned we were expected. Took that means to get rid of us. Uh, him almost do it. In a way, I'm glad it happened. The gang thinks we're dead. They'll continue to operate as before. Also, it may give us a line on the gang's leader. Well, how it do that? I'll tell you after we talk to the sheriff. <laughs> Later, the sheriff started from his chair in surprise as a masked man suddenly entered the back door of his Work. office. Reach you and don't... Oh, wait now. You must be the Lone Ranger. That's right. I didn't mean to startle you, Sheriff. I was expecting you. Thought you'd get here earlier, though. We almost didn't get here at all. What do you mean? Briefly, the Lone Ranger told what had happened on the Mesa. When he finished, the sheriff remarked, Folks saw that fire from the edge of town. We wondered how it started. And we were mighty thankful it wasn't closer. You really think it was started on purpose, huh? Yes, definitely. Mm, that gang must have found out you were coming here. How many people knew we were expected, Sheriff? Very few, just me and the deputy. Oh, I mentioned it to Clem Bleeker, owner of the livery stable and stage line. He was ratting around about the stage robbery and all, so I told him you were coming. Hmm. Those are the only people who knew? Uh-huh. I told Bleeker to keep quiet about it. I know he... W oh, wait a minute. I did mention it to Carl Lubeck, who runs the saddle and leather shop. But Carl's a meek, pleasant hombre who minds his own business and doesn't do any blabbing. I see. One owns the livery stable and the other the leather and saddle shop. Yeah, yeah. That gives me an idea, Sheriff. It might bring the leader of his gang into the open. Hey... You don't think either Bleeker or Lubeck has anything to do with that gang, do you? I don't know. I'm going to make sure. But don't talk to anyone else about this matter. Now, uh, here's the idea I have in mind. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode to the edge of town after the masked man's talk with the sheriff. There, the Lone Ranger carefully disguised his features and using a suit he had borrowed from the sheriff, changed from his usual clothes. When he was finished, he looked like a businessman. Then, leaving Toto, he walked into town and went first to the livery stable office. Good evening. Howdy, stranger. What can I do for you? I'm figuring to hire a buckboard and a fast team. I have to go to Milton just after dawn. I got a stage leaving at dawn. It goes through there, and you could get the afternoon stage back, mister. Sorry, but I don't hanker to lose a certain valuable satchel I'll be taking with me. I've heard about the stage robberies in this territory. Huh. Well, it's still kind of risky carrying anything valuable by buckboard alone, mister. And not going alone. The sheriff is sending a deputy with me as guard. You must be from the Milton Mining Company. They sent word they wasn't going to use my stage to carry their payroll anymore. Maybe I am. Anyway, I'll leave a deposit to cover the buckboard and team. 
Just as you say, mister. I'll have a couple of good horses and a buckboard ready for you early in the morning. You can pay me the rest then. Thanks. I'll see you right after the dawn. A short time later, the Lone Ranger entered Carl Lubeck's shop. Good evening. What can I do for you? I want a strong leather satchel with a lock on it. Something to hold valuables, uh, like a payroll, friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have just what you need. Here's a strong satchel, my friend. And the lock is very good. Fine cowhide. The best. Reckon that'll do. How much? Twenty dollars. Good enough. Here you are. Oh, <laughs> you should carry a roll of bills like that in a satchel instead of in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing to what that satchel will hold when I leave here in the morning. Oh, you're leaving on the stage, hmm? No, going to Milton, the buckboard. Well, reckon I get along now and get me some sleep. Got to get on the trail right after dawn. So long, mister. Good night, my friend. Come in again. After the Lone Ranger left the shop, Carl went into the workroom to speak to Digger. Digger, I have something for you to do. Yeah, what? Ride to the hideout. Tell the men to meet me at dawn at Pointed Rock, out on the Milton Trail. Right. Just after dawn the following morning, the Lone Ranger, still wearing the disguise, drove the buckboard along the Milton Trail with the deputy. Meantime, Carl and his men waited behind the big boulders along the trail at Pointed Rock. They all wore bandanas as face masks in anticipation of the holdup. I'm sure the stranger is carrying a large amount of cash. It'll be easy to take it from him. It's funny the way folks blab all their business to you, Carl. <laughs> They think of me as a meek and harmless shopkeeper, my friend. <laughs> Listen, I think he's coming. Yeah, that's him, all right. Good, good. Have your faces masked, your guns ready. Yeah, right. Steady. Steady. Let's go. Get up, get up, get up. As the outlaws rode out in front of the buckboard, firing shots over the heads of the deputy and the masked man, the Lone Ranger quickly pulled to a stop. Ho, oh, ho there, ho. Oh. Deputy, raise your hands quickly. Right. As the outlaw stopped beside the buckboard, the Lone Ranger looked them over searchingly. Carl, without his gold spectacles and with a hat and bandana mask, wasn't immediately recognizable. Also, he was wise enough to let Sam do the talking. All right, mister. We want that satchel you have there. We have both of you covered. Go to the ground. Don't make any false moves. Great day. I thought I'd be safe from you outlaws if I brought that payroll by buckboard. Payroll, huh? Well, that's luck. Go it here. Yeah, I can there's nothing else to do. That is. Now watch him, man. All right, Sam. All right, I got it. Anyway, now keep reaching while we get your guns. Boss, you're on the driver's side. We'll keep him covered. You get his gun, I'll take the deputy. Carl Lubeck, still silent, moved his horse close beside the buckboard on the driver's side. Then he reached out to take the Lone Ranger's guns. As he did so, the Lone Ranger's hands flashed downward. No, he twisted please. Carl's arm with one hand and drew a gun with the other. He quickly stuck the gun against Carl's ribs, saying... He called you, boss. You tell him to drop the guns or I'll kill you. Shoot him, he's got my arm. Hey, look, a posse. <laughs> turned their attention to the oncoming posse, leaving Carl at the mercy of the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger suddenly brought the butt of his gun down onto the gang leader's head. Are you... That father with you now. Drawing his other gun, the Lone Ranger turned on the outlaws, aided by the deputy. Hey, let's get away from here. You're not leaving. The gang, half of them wounded, found themselves trapped between the guns of the posse and those of the Lone Ranger and the deputy. Within a few moments, realizing that further resistance was hopeless and escape cut off, they surrendered. We give up! We give up! I thunder your plan worked, mister. Yes. See, man on the ground here beside the buckboard is the leader. Let's get that bandana off his face. Here. Jumping catfish, that's Carl Lubeck. What? Hey, he had us all fooled. What? What happened? I... The game's up, Lubeck. 
Thanks to this hombre, we trapped you and your gang. I'm sure you'll have no difficulty getting plenty of evidence against him for other crimes, Sheriff. His men will squeal to save their own necks. Why, his, his voice, it, it's not the same. It's a voice you didn't expect anyone ever to hear again, Lubeck. You must have been the one who planned to trap him and his Indian friend up on the mesa late yesterday. But I, I do not understand. Holy cat, you mean to say they're still alive? Uh, we plenty alive. You not wounded, me show you his fist. The law will deal with them, Toto. We'll leave them in the hands of the sheriff. Their capture clears Mr. Bleeker of any connection with the outlaw gang. That's right, it does. Of course, he had no idea he was suspected, and neither did anyone else, so no harm is done. Toto and I'll leave now, Sheriff. We'll come this way again sometime. Adios, everybody. Goodbye. 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 But that man, I... I still can't believe he is He's the, the one you tried to kill, all right. He disguised his real features so he wouldn't have to wear his mask. <laughs> That's how he fooled you. So that was it? Yep. Let me tell you something, Lubeck. You may have outsmarted everybody in town, including me. But I don't expect to live to see the day when any crook will ever outsmart the Lone Ranger. No, sir. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.